Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Tuesday, July 2nd. How's everybody doing? Listen to the crickets. Uh, new high in the NASDAQ today. Frankly, I was not expecting that, but I don't think we're going to see any big run-up. Um, I think we're putting in a top in the market. Let me go over the numbers. Yesterday was the first of the month, so we had a big uh, flow day. The leading flows were 133 billion. The net flows were 86 billion. So, you know, I was expecting that. That's what we see on the first of the month. Uh, leading flows, total leading flows are up uh, about 80, 82 billion year over year. I mean, that's strong. But I think the key thing to focus in on is the net flows, net government transfers. By the way, guess what? Atlanta Fed revised down its second quarter GDP growth forecast again, just like I said yesterday, they would have to do it. Um, prior to today, they, it was at 2.1%. Before that, it was at 3.2% because they, they bumped it up. Um, or in June because of one, I think it was because of one strong retail sales report. They they had it at 1.6%, then they jumped it up to 3.2%. And I told you guys, I said, that's not gonna last. They're gonna have to revise it down. Then last, uh, on Friday, they revised it down to 2.1%. Today, they revised it down to 1.7%. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, like, guys, if you don't see I'm just one little guy sitting here, you know, like with my analytical framework. I don't have a team of economists, you know, I'm not in some big uh, institution. And I'm sitting here telling you guys like, like this, is, these out there, these are the academics. These are, you know, all the, the, the best of the best, supposedly working at the Federal Reserve in the different uh, branches or whatever they can't come up with an accurate forecast. And maybe you don't care about that. You know, maybe you don't care about that. You wanna say, Mike, how do you make money? I wanna make money. I, I could understand, you know, practicality is about making money. You don't care about the academic stuff, but I have to tell you that the way to make money is, I mean, you, you, you could be a gambler and get lucky, but the way to build wealth, two things. One is patience and discipline. And the other thing is having an understanding of the big picture, having an understanding of the macro economic picture of the economy. What is the economy going to do? If you know what the economy is going to do, and if you have those other qualities, the, the patience and, and discipline, you can make money. There's no secret. Um, you know, Warren Buffett basically bet on um, a growth function and that, you know, he's, he's 93 years old or 91 years old. I don't know. And the growth function that he bet on was the United States is a growing economy. Like he started this, I don't know, 50, 60, he started his investment career like 60 years ago or something like that. But basically his macro view has always been that it's a growth function. The economy is a growth function. So like he waits patiently and you can't argue with his process because the guy's worth over a hundred billion. Like I've said so many times, he never created any industry. He never invented anything. Okay. He's a stock market investor and he blows away. I don't care. You know, a lot of you guys, you're all enamored by the short term in and out and this and that. Even, um, Who's the Citadel guy? I forget even his name, uh, you know, that runs like the biggest hedge fund. Not even close, not even close to Warren Buffett, okay? And he, the Citadel guy, and I don't remember his name because I, I don't pay attention to these guys, but I, I bring it up here just as some elucidation, just, you know, to, to show you by comparison that his company basically front, legally front runs orders, okay? Inside, that's basically insider trading, which the government allows these guys to do because they bought out 
lawmakers in Congress, okay? At one time, actually, they were, Congress was considering banning that, those algorithmic uh, traders because it's front running. It's inside information. But anyway, this guy, and geez, I, I wish I could remember his name. Anyway, Citadel. Um, they buy the orders from like Fidelity and Schwab and everything, and they got their computers positioned right there at the New York Stock Exchange or the CME uh, data center out in Illinois. And, you know, in nanosecond, they're working in nanoseconds. They see the orders coming down the pipe. They jump ahead. As soon as they, as soon as the orders hit, then they get out and they're doing that like thousands or a million times a day. I don't know what. Uh, but what I'm saying is like Warren Buffett blows these guys away. And because he bet on the macro and his view of the macro was, was a, the stock market's a growth function when you're talking about the United States economy. Maybe one day it won't be. I don't know. But I'm sitting here, I sit here every single day telling you guys it's a growth function and you got to buy the dips. And yeah, right now I'm saying like the economy is slowing down. The stock stocks are speculative, which means, you know, they're risky for a correction. But I don't advise shorting the market. I've told you guys so many times about my personal story, my years as a floor trader on four different exchanges, how all I did was sell and go short. And I never really made any money. There were times I made a lot of money big scores, and then I'd end up pissing it away, you know, giving it back. It's the same mentality as a gambler who goes in and he has, you know, he rolls the dice or he hits the blackjack. And, um, you know, then over the next how many events, the next how many bets, like he gives it all away, okay? If you've ever watched the movie Casino, that great movie with Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, and directed by Martin Scorsese. There's a scene in there where there's some high roller Japanese client at the casino and he made a big score, okay? And he walks out of the casino getting ready to fly back to Japan and Robert De Niro tells, uh, actually Don Rickles was in the movie, wonderful guy, you know, the late Don Rickles, nobody better. And Robert De Niro's character, uh, Ace Rosen Rosenberg, I think was his name. He tells um, Don Rickles' character, keep this guy here. Tell him there's something wrong with the plane. And that's what they did. And they brought the, the big high roller, the whale, all right? He was a whale. Brought him back to the casino and he because De Niro knew he was going to gamble again. And he started off very cautious because he didn't want to lose back. And then he ended up losing everything back and more. A great anecdote for reality, I think. So anyway, let me get back to the picture because what I was saying was like, you might, guys, a lot of you probably don't care. Like he talks about the macro every day. He talks about the economy, he talks about the flows. I don't give a shit about that. How do you make money? Like that's kind of like a gambling mentality, but I'm telling you how to make money. I'm telling you how to make money. <laughs> But a lot of you don't want to hear it, okay? I'm saying, like, you need two things. You need patience and discipline combined. I'll put those two things. Uh, and discipline would, would be in the category of, you know, mental game, just controlling your emotions and patience. And then you need to know the macro picture. And I'm telling you, I sit here every day saying, here's these guys working at the Federal Reserve, teams and teams and teams of economists. Every day changing their number, Papa, one day up, one day down, one day up, one day down. And I'm sitting here, little old me, with my very simplistic model of fiscal flows, which is the first derivative of all economic activity for the United States. And I explained that yesterday. And I tell you, you're the first to know. You guys are the first to know. I tell you. I tell you before I tell, I don't have any connection to anybody at the Fed, so there's nobody I could tell, but I tell you, you could even, if you have a connection at the Fed, you could tell them, hey, you're gonna have to drop your numbers. They're gonna ask you why. You don't have to say Mike Norman told me, you could say fiscal flows. They're gonna be, huh, what, fiscal flows? 
And they're going to say something like, oh, we, you know, we don't pay attention to that. I guarantee you they would say we don't, we don't pay attention to that. But that's on them. Okay, that's on them. They're the ones changing their forecasts every single day. And I keep telling, every time they go somewhere, I say, sometimes I say, yeah, that's going to be right. Sometimes I say, hey, you know what? It's going to be even more than that. But recently, this year, I've been saying every time they bop it up, I'm saying, nope. Is going to come down. It's going to come down. So what do you do in a case like that? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You don't go chasing after stocks willy-nilly and chasing after the FOMO stocks that everybody, you know, is hot and that's all they know because this is classic, classic crowd behavior. There's stuff you can buy. I've been telling you stuff. The banks, the home builders, the home builders were down today, Okay. This country's uh, got 1.2 million annual housing starts. It's ridiculous for a 330 million population. In 1968, we were doing 2.4 million housing starts when the population was like 200 million. All right, what are we up? We're up like 60, 70% in population and they're doing half of what they were doing in 1968. In 1972, we were doing over 2 million. In 2006, the peak of the housing market, we were doing over 2 million. Now, a poultry, 1.2 million, they got to build more. And investors are selling these companies with incredibly attractive um, earnings um, yields. That is, that the earnings yields way over the risk free rate on a T bill. But they're chasing after, like, I'm not saying there's something wrong with NVIDIA, but I mean, it's so concentrated right now in these late to the game players. I got orders to buy NVIDIA, don't think I don't. And by the way, I bought Tesla when it, when it traded all the way down recently, and now it's back up over 200. I think I was buying it like, in like around the, the 140s or the 150s. I have to go check now it's back over 200. There's things to buy. And you say, Mike, why do averages keep going up? Because the averages are dominated by a, couple, a handful of mega cap stocks. But there's stuff to buy. I'm not saying don't buy. I'm just saying Stocks are speculative. There are areas that you could get involved with now, right? I always say accumulate good assets, accumulate good assets and hold on to them. The stock market always has something to offer. But people, they don't pay attention. They got blinders on. They look at the headlines. They want to do what everybody else does. You know why? Because then if it goes wrong, they could say, aha, don't blame me. Everybody was doing the same thing. Well, everybody was selling the market in October 2022. Everybody was selling the market last year. All the geniuses at Morgan Stanley and Bank of America and Citi, all these playing JP Morgan and, Go and Goldman, they were all selling the market last year because interest rates were going up. I was the one telling you that that was going to be a boom. Same thing happened in the Reagan presidency. That was the biggest line item of government spending, that that fueled the Reagan boom, if you're old enough to remember that. I certainly am. So, there's not much more to say. I mean, it, it's just like it gets redundant after a while. I mean, I know some of you, you just want to hear certain things that make you, that give you the green light to do what you want to do, which is like in and out and in and out and in and out. And you don't care about the macroeconomic stuff because it's like, ah, that's boring. That's not exciting. See, like, that's the thing, right? And I've said this so many times that a lot, I would say most people, not even a lot of people, I would say most people, the vast majority of people get into the stock market not because they want to make money. They think they want to make money, but the real draw, the real thing for them, the magnet, is the action. They want action. They want excitement. It's the same mechanism, that dopamine rush that you get in a, in a casino. They want action. Because making money is too boring. Like the, the way that you do it, I shouldn't say making money, but, but wealth creation is boring. Okay, you got to sit there. That's boring to a lot of people, you know, especially nowadays when we, you know, uh, 
Our attention spans are so low with social media and everything. I, even me, I can't even want people say to me, Mike, make your video shorter. I understand that because like even me, I can't even, not even two minutes. Like I'm, I'm 60, you know, 90 seconds in, I, I, I want to get out. I understand. And by the way, on that note, <laughs> please like and subscribe. I'm going to say that every day. I never used to say it. It does help. Guys, come on. Like and subscribe, it helps the channel. Go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. See you tomorrow. Bye.